Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Chak Badash. Devil honors to the elders and apostles, the great Muslim that we will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all, back at one another, let's do the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai. Lord will, this video is edifying. And without further ado, we just want to get right into it through the spirit. All right, you want to make sure that you're not judging, you know, according to your feelings or in according to your eyes. You want to make sure that you're judging a, a righteous judgment, okay? And that might seem like a small thing. And um, let me go ahead and start with that scripture. In John 7 and verse 24, it says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment, okay? So you don't want to judge according to the appearance, man. All right, because like they say, uh, looks can be deceiving. Or another thing they say is uh, don't read a, or don't judge a book by its cover. All right, you have to find out what the whole matter is prior to you putting your final stamp on it, so to speak, man. All right, and the scriptures instruct us to do that. Okay, that's Sirach or Ecclesiastes um, chapter 5. And uh, start at verse 11. Be swift to hear. And let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer. Yes, yeah, so you're supposed to be swift to hear, right? Swift to hear somebody say something. It says, and with patience give answer, man. Meaning what? That you're not just quick to blur out something back, all right? You think about what you say prior to you, prior to you saying it. And that's all a part of executing judgment, okay? Because when you execute judgment upon something, you don't want to be quick to just throw something on it. You want to make sure that you're putting the right judgments out there man all right <clears throat> verse 12 it says if thou has understanding answer thy neighbor if not lay thy hand upon thy mouth right so you want to make sure that you get an understanding of what you're about to judge or what you're about to give answer unto prior to you just blurting out something just because man it says if you have understanding answer your neighbor if not lay your hand upon your mouth you see and that's all a part of having righteous judgment okay this is Sirach or ecclesiastes um 11 and verse 6 or section let me start from the top with uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes 11 and 1. Wisdom lift up the head of him that is of low degree and maketh him to sit among great men. Yeah, so you can be of a low degree, all right? But through you having the wisdom of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, it can make you sit amongst great men. You see? Um, verse 2. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither a poor man for his outward appearance. Yeah, so you might see some people who may not look the part, so to speak, who may have, um, you know, certain quote-unquote flaws if you will which we all have flaws because we're all in the flesh whether you're a good-looking brother or not you know what i'm saying or vice versa whether you're a good-looking sister or not we're all in the flesh so we all have flaws all right because this flesh is is a flaw within itself you see because why you know we're subject to sin we're subject to going off you see now the lord didn't make a mistake when he made the flesh this way he created it for his purpose you know, but however, that does not mean that we're not flawed, all right, according to the standard of uh, righteousness. And the scriptures even say all our righteousness is as filthy rags, you see. But anyways, verse 3, it says, the bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. Yeah, so there's a lot of things in this world that fly. And it can just, um, into size comparison, uh, you know, a bee compared to whatever, let's just say, you know, a modern day time, a plane, you know, <laughs> a plane is way bigger than a bee. Both of them fly. But guess what? The bees fruit referring to the honey. All right. is chief of sweet things, man. You see, so just be, so basically, yeah, the bee might be a small creature among the Lord's infinite number of creatures. But at the same time, you know, it, it holds a lot of weight. OK, because. Honey is a part of honey is a part of the necessities of life, so to speak. All right, and actually to get the scripture, which is the spiritual honey first and foremost. All right, Sirach Ecclesiastes, um, thirty-nine, and uh, verse twenty-five says, "For the good are good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners." So the Lord He can make. Uh, um, a bad situation turn into a good one for a righteous person and make a good situation turn into a bad situation for a, for a wicked person. All right. The Lord can uh, do whatever he pleases. You see, verse six, uh, 
It's like in verse 26, it says, The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, oil, and clothing. All these are for the good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. Yeah, all right, and all those things apply to the scriptures, you see? But the Lord can use the scriptures to bring someone salvation, or he can use the scriptures to judge them, you see? That's why it says it's sharper than any two-edged sword, because the scripture, you know, you can cut somebody with it, but at the same time, if you're not lined with it, it'll cut you too, you see? That's why you want to make sure that when you're swinging that sword, you know how to swing it, so... Same thing with this truth, man. All right, if you're going to cast judgment upon someone, you know how to judge first and foremost. You don't want to judge according to your own eyes or your ears or what you heard or what he said, what she said. You need to figure out the whole matter, man, because that's a part of being, you know, a, a, a ruler, you know, a king, a governor, so to speak. Because under our Lord, Yahweh Shai, uh, you know, the Most High, Yahweh Shai, okay, the 144,000, the one third, so on and so forth, every man in their own proper order. You know, we're going to be, you know, rulers and governors, so to speak, man. All right. Like y'all, I said, you've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over of uh, five cities or you be ruler of many things, so to speak. So you know, we have to make sure that we're executing good judgment. And what better time to execute and practice that skill, you know, um, right now, while the Lord has given us opportunity, you see. So, you know, in your day to day walk. All right. You don't want to be uh, fooled by appearance. Now, appearance does have its role, you know, but at the same time, you want to know what's within and what's without. All right. So let me go back to Sirach or Ecclesiastes 11. And um, verse four, it says, boast not of thy clothing and raiment and exalt not thyself in the day of honor. Yeah. So if you got nice clothes. You, know, you got nice shoes, whatever. You might have the nice garment in the camp. You know, you don't boast in that. You see? You don't boast in that. All right? Because ultimately, you know, that has nothing to do with the spirit, really. You know, now in a way, it can because, you know, a lot of things are spiritual in life. So you might see a wicked ass nigga wear, some sh wear a shirt that's some wicked shit. You know what I'm saying? Might have some wicked graphic t-shirt, whatever. You know, but that's besides the point. You know, the point is... OK, you want to make sure that you're looking, you know, at, at, at what the true intentions is and what the spirit is as well behind it. You see, because sometimes it could be out of ignorance, too. You know, but sometimes they be doing it purposely. You see, now it says um, for the works of the Lord are wonderful and his works among men are hidden. You see, so the Lord is low key. You know, think about how great how Bashmael Shai is. And the Lord is low key. The Lord, the Lord can flex if he wants to. He has every right to flex. But. Most of the Lord's works is hidden, man, you know? Think about how glorious the chariots are. You know, the Lord doesn't reveal those to everybody, you know? And that's just, that's just one of, that's just one thing mentioned out of the infinite number of the Lord's, you know, wondrous and glorious creations that his hands have put forth, you see? So, point being, if the Lord ain't out here flexing, then we ain't supposed to be out here flexing, not for vain glory, you know? Because if anybody, if anybody deserves glory, it's obviously the most high. Yahweh, all right, and Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right. Now it says, um, verse five: Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of hath worn the crown. You see, yeah, okay. So basically, one that was never thought of that have worn the crown. Perfect example: King David. You see, King David when Samuel, the prophet, was anointing King David. You know, he had all of Jesse's sons pass before him. And the last one was David, you see. But David didn't might might not have looked the part, you see. But guess what? You know that was who the Lord was dealing with in the spirit. All right. It says, um, verse six: Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced, and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. You see, yeah. So you might have a mighty man, but he the Lord can disgrace him. The Lord can humble him. You see. Uh, you might have a um, honorable men. You see, but they can go into captivity as well. You had certain kings of Israel who went into captivity, you know, delivered into other men's hands, basically being subject, you know. So you want to make sure that you just uh, executing righteous judgment. All right. Verse seven. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first and then rebuke. That's the point right there. That's the whole moral of the story, man. All right. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. 
understand first and then rebuke. Like scripture also says in Sirach the sixth chapter. Okay, Sirach Ecclesiastes 6 and 7, it says, If thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Yeah, just because he might look the part doesn't mean he is the part, man. All right. Now, when he is the part and he looks the part, all right, that's a different story. You see, but you want to make sure that both match up. You see? And a lot of times, you know, uh, you, you also have to think about the standard. You see, that's because that's that's where the judgments truly come from. It comes from the standard. You see, because if you have the standard of the world, all right, that's the that's that's your moral compass, so to speak, what how the world views things. All right, then you're going to judge things based off the world. But if you have the mind frame and the standard of Yahweh Bashem al Shai, you're going to judge things the way Yahweh Bashem al Shai judges things. All right. And how do we know that we have the standard in the mind from Yahweh Bashem al Shai? Because he's given us the spirit to receive his word, man. All right. And what us reading the Lord's word is like reading the Lord's journal, reading his diary. Therefore, we're getting into his psychology. You see, now we don't, we can't figure out the most high. You know, that's, that's, that's a part of the mystery, so to speak. You see, because there's a lot of things, like it says, majority of his works are hid. So there's still a lot of things about the most high that we don't know. You see, but yet he's given us so much, you know, for our level of understanding, so to speak, because we're in the flesh. And the scriptures say, you know, seek not things above thy strength. But what is commanded, thee, think thereupon with reverence, you know, because more things are shooting to thee than men understand. So the fact that we know pork and shrimp crab and lobster is bad you know we know a lot more than these average people in the average babylonians in the world you see because people in the world they're so far gone that you know you tell them eating pork is going off they, they look at you and laugh at you but really they're laughing at the standard or the mind frame of the most high you see so it all goes back to the standard as well right so it's um Let's go ahead. I want to get this scripture real quick. Back to what I was saying. This is 1 Corinthians 2. Start at verse 9. It says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ever heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which ye how about Shemel Shai have prepared for them that love him. You see? And that's talking about the kingdom, man. The kingdom is about to be on a whole different level of gloriousness. You see, than we could ever imagine. You know, we have a glimpse you see, but we're, there's still yet uh, so much more to be, you know, uh, fill in the blanks, so to speak, you know. And that's a part of the glory of it. Verse 10, it says, but the Most High have revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of Yahweh Shem El Shai. You see, he says, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of Yahweh Shem El Shai knoweth no man. But the spirit of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. You see, so that's the point of that right there. Okay, if you you know uh, the reasonings of men because you're a mortal man, you, you know, yourself. You see, so sometimes we could tell, all right, that's just the flesh. Or, you know, you might have some in, you know, someone might react a certain way. You know, okay, the spirit ain't on them. They, they in the world. You know why? Because we were once in the world and we're in the flesh and we know what the battle is like, so to speak. But the thing is, the flip side of the coin is the people of the world, they can't tell you the spirit of the Lord because the spirit of the Lord has to be upon them in order for them to identify it. You see, so, like I said, it takes one to know one. So the spirit has to tap into your spirit for you to receive the spiritual truth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's not just something that everyone can receive. You know, you, you have a, a clear proof of the Most High's existence. And the natural man will find some way how to make it into his own logical, you know, mind frame, so to speak. You see? Just because he can't explain it. You know, you, you try to show a natural man a video of a chair. They say, oh, that's not real. You give him full proof that it's real. Oh, that, that might be Russia. That might be China. You know? But not even, but just not even regarding the fact that it's neither of that. It's, 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 it's the vehicles of the heavens, you see? But they're natural men, so they won't receive it. So it's 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. It says, now we have received the spirit. So like, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but of, but the spirit which is of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing. We compare spiritual things with spiritual, man. So, you know, even with judgment, you see, you might be listening to a song that's, you know, worldly, 
But little do you know, that song could actually apply to the truth in a way if you're looking at it spiritually, you see? But that all goes back to having the proper judgment, all right? It's verse 14. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Shai, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. <coughs> Salakia. All right. Right. So a foolish man, he can't easily point out things to Yahweh Bashem Shai because it's spiritually discerned. You see, he needs the spirit to help him discern it. All right. It says. Verse 15, but he that is spiritual judges all things. You see? So if you're actually a spiritual person, you judge everything, man, including yourself first and foremost. All right? So, yes, it's lawful to judge. No, it's not going off to judge your neighbor. All right? The difference is you, if you're going to judge your neighbor, make sure that you're using righteous judgment like we read earlier, John 7, 24. And a part of using righteous judgment is knowing that... Um, you know, not being a hypocrite, okay? Because you can tell your neighbor, don't eat pork. And yeah, you're right. You They shouldn't eat pork. But at the same time, all right, when you're eating pork yourself, okay, you're being a hypocrite. And you may outwardly play the part telling your neighbor not to do it. But inwardly, okay, you're being wicked. And that's the same problem that the scribes and Pharisees had. You see, they, they this is, uh, oh, y'all shall said that your righteousness has to exceed the righteousness are the scribes and Pharisees, you see? So, you know, you're supposed to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. You're supposed to judge, but you also have to understand, you know, when you are judging, let it be righteous judgment, okay? <clears throat> and don't just go off the outwardly appearance, okay? Verse 16, it says, well, I'm reading this again, 15, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Yeah, because a natural man can't judge a spiritual man because they don't know how to use the proper judgments to do so. They're going to be judging them based off the worldly standpoint. But that's not true judgment because the true judgments is uh, the judgments inspired by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Verse 16, it says, For who may have, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? You see? Right. You have to know the mind of the Lord to instruct an individual. If you're going to tell somebody to do something, all right, then it has to be <clears throat> righteous instructions. If not, that'll be sin unto you. All right. It says, but we have the mind of Mashiach. Yeah. And Yahweh Shai and the Most High are on one accord. Okay. Yahweh Shai is mind frame is according to the mind frame of the Most High. Did not Yahweh Shai say many times, my doctrine is not my own. <clears throat> the works that I do, they are not of myself. You see, you know, the words that I speak, they are not of me. They are of the Father, so on and so forth. So. Yahusha was also saying, always saying that he came to do his father's business. He came to do his father's work, all right, in many different roundabout ways. And we are to be the same way. <clears throat> so that's doing the father's standard, okay, which is these scriptures. All right, now, let me get that story about King David. It's 1 Samuel 16. Start at verse 1, and the Lord Yahweh said unto Samuel, How long without mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Yeah, so the Lord is saying, this is when the Lord is getting ready to anoint King David, uh, king over Israel. All right? It's, uh, verse 2, and Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul here, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. All right, verse 3. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, and said comest thou peaceably? You see? And, and, and think about it. You know, that goes to show you the respect and the reverence that they had. For the prophets back in that time. All right. And now, you know, even to a certain degree, they still have respect or reverence to the prophets to a certain degree, but not as much as they did back then. You see, because people, when they walk by the camp, a lot of times they don't fear. You know, they might ponder in their mind, like, mm, there's something different about these guys. But most of the time, they don't fear. You know, they don't show that deep reverence or respect 
to where if they see the men of the Lord, they're fear, they're trembling, you know, shaking, scared, <clears throat> which they should be. The scriptures say, um, you know, shall the, shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? You see, so we're blowing a trumpet in the city by warning our people, warning these different nations that the judgment of Yahweh Bashim al shot. But yet these people don't tremble. They just try to uh, fight against the uh, fight against the message, so to speak, you know, <clears throat> but <clears throat> even in a flip side. All right. You can you can apply this in a way because, look, it says that the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, it's come as thou peaceably. So they were scared to see him coming. But they asked, you know, is you come in peace, you know, but what did he say? Peaceably. He said he comes peaceably. Right. So that goes to show you what that <clears throat> they had to uh, execute proper judgment first to find out, you know, because in the outward appearance, it looked like Samuel was coming to cast judgment in, in a in an evil sense. But they said he came peaceably, man. So basically, you know, in a roundabout way, that's subtly a way of, you know, not looking at just the outward appearance, so to speak. OK, because if you see a prophet coming to you, a lot of times it was because the Lord meant business and he was sending that prophet to go let you know that you're doing something wrong. You see. So. But, you know, you had times that were the opposite. And here's one of them. You see. So let's continue. This is first Samuel 16 and. uh. Verse 5, and he said, Peaceably I'm come to sacrifice unto the Lord Yahweh. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed, and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that the Lord looked on Eliab or Eliab and said, Surely the Lord Yahweh's anointed is before him. So he said, Look, he looked on him, right? But what did the Lord say? It says, But the Lord Yahweh said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord Yahweh looketh on the heart. Yeah, you see? So the, so going back to what? Don't just trust the outward appearance. All right? You got to look at the spirit of the individual that you're judging as well. Okay? Because you might have someone who come across the camp. Might look bummy. Might look, quote unquote, dusty. But it could really be an angel in disguise. You know, whether it be a literal angel or an angel trapped in his flesh, meaning in a roundabout way, a member of the elect. You see? <clears throat> um, we can keep reading. All right. And Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither have the Lord chosen this. You see? So the Lord didn't choose him either. All right. It says, then Jesse, it's like here, verse 9, then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, neither have the Lord chosen this. <laughs> so he, he, he keeps giving all his sons pass by before him, but he's saying, the Lord's like, I'm not, I didn't choose this one, I didn't choose this one, I didn't choose this one, right? Then Jesse made, it's like, and again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. Behold, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come thither. Come hither. You see? So this is the youngest, right? And the youngest is supposed to be the baser one, you know, the one that doesn't appear to be, you know, super sanctified, so to speak. Not that it's not possible, but, you know, most of the time the youngest is the one to be, you know, the one that's uh, 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 not highly esteemed, all right? Inferior, so to speak, all right? And it says, um, verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord Yahweh said, arise, anoint him, but this is he, all right? It says, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from the from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. You see, so that's the point of that right there. All right. So David, he didn't really look the part, but the spirit of the Lord was upon him, man. All right. And he was a keeper of the sheep. Same thing we're doing now. 
we're keeping the sheep. You see? So, ultimately, you know, the point really has been made, but I do have a couple more precepts, all right? As far as, uh, you know, looking on outward appearance, so to speak. This is James chapter 2, verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord, Yahweh Shemashiach, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Yeah, you don't want to be a respecter of persons, man, okay? Meaning that you're going to uh, uh, decline judgment, uh, you know, from one from another because you have a certain form of respect for an individual. Like a, like an artist, you might you might like a certain artist's music, all right. Even though that artist is wicked, you see. So, you know, you try to rest judgment or or twist judgment because you like the way his music sounds. No, man, you gotta be able to fully admit, you know, this nigga song, you know, sound all right, but he is wicked. You see, you have to be able to admit that. That's that's a part of not being a respecter of persons, and that's just an example. You see, or if you have a family member that's going off. You know, and the Lord put in your spirit to rebuke them. All right, you rebuke their ass. Don't matter if it's, you know, whoever. Really, you know, it doesn't matter. You see, but it, everything is balanced at the end of the day, you know. So you want to make sure that it's done in balance and it's done in order, you know, and the, and the spirit is backing you up. Because sometimes it's best not to say anything at all, you know, but it's just all through the spirit, you see. <clears throat> now, uh, verse 2, it says, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. It says, and ye have respect to him that wear the gay clothing. Gay clothing meaning they're wearing nice clothes, fresh clothing, right? It says, and saying to him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit under, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then far partial in yourselves, and become judges of evil thoughts? You see? So, basically, you know, you see someone in the fresh clothes, you sit them in a good place. You see someone in the bummy clothes, so to speak, you sit them in a bad place. Because why? You're judging on the outside. You're not judging on the inward. All right. Verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom. All right. Which he has promised them that love him. You see? So the Lord chose the poor of this world, rich in faith, man. All right. Are you rich in this world or are you rich in this faith of Yahweh Bashem al -Shai? Because the Lord wants the individuals who are rich in the faith of Yahweh Bashem al -Shai. Okay. And just because you might have some money in your savings account doesn't make you wicked. All right. But it's the thing is, you know, how are you getting that money? Are you doing it in the spirit of a worldly way? All right. Trying to be rich in this world. Or are you just, you know, doing it through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem al -Shai? You see, there's a difference, man. All right. There's some brothers out here who got nice things, you know. There's brothers who, who made money in the scriptures. You know, Joseph Ar Arimathea, all right. He had money, you see, but he was a believer in Yahweh Shai, you know. King Solomon, he was, you know, Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. He was one of the richest kings in the earth, you see. But most of all, he, he received it through wisdom, you see. So you have to be able to put the faith and the wisdom of Yahweh Shemel Shai and be rich in that and invest yourself in that, all right, rather than be rich in this world, all right? Now it says, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Do not they bless me that worthy name by the which ye are called. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well, right? And think about it. Think if you were in a bummy position, you would want somebody to judge you, you know, with justice. Or think about if you're in a rich position, and, you know, because you have some people out there who have a stink eye towards people who have money. So they might look at them funny because, like, oh, you got money. So they might judge them differently than they would the poor. So think about it. If you were rich, you know, wouldn't you want someone to judge you with justice as well? You see? So it goes both ways, man. It says, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet if in one point he is guilty of all. And that's really the point. All right. Um, let me uh, get this next scripture. Lord will. Matthew chapter 3. And verse 4. All right. And this and the same John had his raiment of camels here and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. You see, because John the Baptist, he dwelled in the wilderness, you know, while he was doing the work. Okay, so John the Baptist, he didn't live 
you know, the most fanciest lifestyle, so to speak, man. Okay? But yet, the Spirit of the Lord was heavy upon John the Baptist, man. And even Yahweh Shai uh, vouched for him. You see? When you go to Matthew, the 11th chapter. And, uh... It's locked in. And, uh, in verse 7. Matthew 11, 7. And as they departed, Yahweh Shai began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. It says, But when ye went, what, like but what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Soft raiment is like kingly apparel, you know, silk clothes, you know, the nice garments. That's what that soft raiment is uh, representing of. You see? It says, Behold, they that wear soft raiment are slacky, but behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses, you see? All right, like you got these uh, pastor pork chops, they wear the nice thousand dollar suits and all that. That's that soft raiment, man. All right, John the Baptist, he wasn't dressed like pastor pork chop, man. All right, if people saw John the Baptist back then, they would look at him like he was a bum, quote unquote, you know? On the outward appearance, you see, but on the inward appearance, He's rich in faith, Yahweh Basham al Shai, which is the pr most precious thing you can attain. All right, like the scripture say, if riches be a, 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 a thing desired, what is what is more uh, rich than wisdom? Roughly paraphrasing. You see, um, that's in Wisdom of Solomon. All right, it says, but what were ye out? What what went ye out for to see a prophet? Yeah, I say unto you, more than a prophet. It says. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And that was written in the book of Isaiah. All right. And it says, Also, John the Baptist was prophesied about in the book of Sirach and, um, and uh, Malachi. All right. Sirach, they refer to him as Elijah. All right. But Yahweh yeah, said it himself that John the Baptist is Elijah in the reincarnation. All right. Now it says, um, Verse 11, verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Yeah, because in the kingdom of heaven, all right, we're going to we're gonna all be on such a high level that the least of our people is going to be greater than the John the Baptist on this side, man. You see? And John the Baptist was a very great man in the faith of Yahweh Bashem Shah. You see, even Yahweh Shah said it himself. You see? So... But what? He didn't have the outwardly appearance of being, you know, a man of the Lord, so to speak, you know. And that's the beauty of it, man. That's the beauty of it, because you have some brothers who look like Edomites, you know, yet they have a beautiful spirit on them. And they're very humble, very knowledgeable brothers, you know, all types of stuff like that, man. All right. And, um. Verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Right, meaning the Israel was suffering from the Romans, okay? The Edomites at that time, and even now, all right, Rome reincarnated, Babylon, the NATO, and the EU. All right, it says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which is Elijah, which was for to come, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So Yahweh is saying, if you can receive it, this is Elijah come back in the reincarnation. Because not everybody can receive certain things like that in the spirit. You see? So, you know, all in all, all right, that's just another example of not looking on the uh, outwardly, all right, of who you might deem to be a man of the Lord or who you might not deem as a man of the Lord. You see? You have to want, you want to uh, make sure that you're looking both on the inward appearance, in other words, the spirit, all right, and the outward appearance as well, you see, because a lot of times, a lot of times, the spirit, you know, within, <laughs> uh, leaks without, so to speak, you know, y'all should say, you know, man, by his fruits, so a lot of times, you know, once the spirit is on a certain person, when you see the way they carry themselves outwardly, you know, like, you know, okay, this individual, the Lord ain't really dealing with this guy, you know, he, he got a clean shaved face. You know, he got line up. You know what I'm saying? He's got all types of folly. 
you know. But, you know, not saying that the Lord can't have mercy on that individual. All right, but you can see that the Lord isn't dealing with him on his highest potential or level because he's still, you know, indulging in worldly things. Okay. Now this is Matthew 23 and um, verse 25. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Yes, yeah, so Lord saying the scribes and Pharisees, they were like men who washed the outside of the cup, but inside of the cup was full of all types of, you know, nastiness, man. All right, so the Lord saying, because our bodies are just a vessel. Same way how a cup is a vessel to hold water, our bodies is a vessel to hold the spirit, you see? And you can have a wicked spirit on you, or you can have a righteous spirit on you, you see? But you want to make sure that you keeping your inward vessel swept and garnished, clean, okay? And the outward too, you see? It's balance. It says, thou blind Pharisee. Cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, and that out that the outside of them may be clean also. You see? Yeah, if you're going to get a bowl, all right, you make sure that you mainly clean up the inside first, and then the outside. You see? So worry about things of the spirit more than things of the flesh. And that's really an exhortation to myself as well. You know? But... The spirit needs a, a vessel to house itself, so to speak, man. So you want to make sure that your vessel is clean so it can be meat for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. You see, that's why brothers go on fast, brothers pray, brothers read, brothers do the work, you know, you fellowship. You do things that help build up the spirit, help build up the inward man, you know, and then it'll shine on the outside. You see, you keep the dietary laws. That's helping building the inward man, too. You know? Because those are things that are the spirit. Those are things that help harness the spirit in a righteous vibration. All right, now it says, um, but it affects you outwardly, too. Like, if you are if you, if you eat, you know, all types of uh, folly, you're going to see it. Your, body, your flesh is going to look way weaker than when you, you know, you're following the ways of health, which is the most highest word, you know? All right, this is um, verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so, ye, uh, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You see? Woe unto you, scribes. So that's the point on that right there. You know? That's the point. So basically... You want to make sure that you just judge righteous judgment, not judging according to the flesh. You know, you're judging according to the spirit. All right. Whether, you know, something may look a certain way. All right. But you have to actually find out if it actually is, man. All right. And we learn the standard, so to speak, by the judgments of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. That's how we learn the true standards of how to judge. All right. Because to be a true judge, you must know the difference between good and evil. You see, and it tells you in Genesis, the third chapter, about that. That's how we're made gods, all right? Because we know how to judge like the Most High God, all right? It's Genesis 3, and uh, verse 22, it says, And the Lord Yahweh, power said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, all right, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Yes, yeah, so you got to take of the tree of life. Which is keeping the law, such as commandments, and the tree of life brings that wisdom, and that's going to make you live on forever. That's going to, you know, because Christian say righteousness is immortal. You see, but here it is: you can be in the flesh, and you can have angelic-like knowledge, but you have to understand the standard. You see, but um, you know, that's really the point. All right, Lord, will this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Chakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the great most and every well, peace and blessings to the elected Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball.